Good evening. Welcome to the Twin Peaks Coffee Time channel and I'm James. Tonight I'm offering uh, some resounding proof of my um, psychic insights basically. I think you'll find these um, entirely convincing if you just stay with me. So, anyway, how are things with uh, my faithful viewers out there? How are you all doing? I've already seen that uh, Sveen Lagamir has uh, left a message. Hello there, Sveen. Sveen is asking, what is this? kindergarten or a kindergarten well I don't know why you would think that this is not a kindergarten this is damn good coffee time today on the 13th of November 2021 uh, with me James um, it's now just after 11 here in the UK uh, outside it's very Damp, very wet, raining out there, cold. Um, I've just made a small amount of, taken a small amount of footage to show you that and uh, indicate what's going on outside the kitchen window. And you may remember from previous videos that I made clear that I was having moments of psychic uh, devilry insight or a form of uh, precognitive thinking, I believe, that uh, that were going on when I was specifically in the kitchen. And I don't know if it was to do with the making the coffee <clears throat> process, probably, or it could be to do with me getting slightly into this state of denial because of... Uh, the, the kitchen sink having some uh, pots and stuff in or plates, just, you know, two or three plates that I need to wash. But instead of doing that, I make coffee and then, uh, you know, the re as the rest I've described, you know, having uh, psychic insights. So, you know, it, I'm not actually joking entirely in terms of the, the whole psychic business because um, you know it's arguable how we view time and things you know from our own perception etc I think it's plausible that we could pick up on ideas out there that haven't happened yet for instance or obviously things that have happened uh, there are some people, you know, and they have these, they claim to have had past lives, for instance, and then recall things that happened to them in the past, um, like, you know, 300 years before they were born or something. Um, it's more than likely, obviously, by, you know, logical thought that uh, these people are mainly and children, etc., may be inventing what they uh, what they claim to have happened to them, etc., in the past, just by the, the sheer power of imagination. Um, for instance, there's no way of actually proving, for instance, that somebody was knew about a certain thing, and uh, children as well. They could just pick it up from adults around them, more than likely. That's one thing, um, but for, but with me as an example, for instance, I don't surround myself with um, not by choice, but more just uh, just the way it is. I don't have uh, contact with lots of people in the Twin Peaks community who are going to tell me uh, lots and lots of rumors or something, you know, and uh, give me. 
some kind of uh, insider information, gossip, whatever. But, you know, I, I wouldn't actually like it if I was in the position that I was able to get all that info, you know, and people were telling me, oh, this is definitely happening. I know it for sure, you know, and uh, it's uh, it's like that Reddit rumor, which came about recently and obviously impacted upon me, where, you know, they were saying that Lynch had been cited in the... Snoqualmie area, locations of Twin Peaks area, uh, in August, I believe. And I tried to contact this person who was making that post on Reddit, and they just didn't reply to me. So that made me wonder, well, maybe they don't know anything else, and they don't, they're not used to somebody just writing to them. Uh, but also it makes me think, well, they're not really fully sure about it. Uh, even though they're saying it was four times confirmed, it's uh, it makes me doubt it more when they don't want to sort of debate it. But maybe I should have just responded to the actual message, but I, don't, I really don't think the person knew any more than they already said. So, And even if Lynch were spotted in different uh, locations and he was... Uh, spotted in a different location near some kind of ski resorts that's more mountainous, similar, you know, Twin Peaks type area. Um, I can't remember where it is. Where's the Cats? Cats whatever mountains or not Catskill. Anyway, Millie told me about that. And I do trust her, but again, it doesn't really make any difference. Like somebody can be spotted in different locations. That doesn't mean that anything is... Uh, happening for sure, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I, will, I, I think obviously, to just look at this totally logically, because of the Reddit post and someone saying, oh, I have been quadruple, um, I've quadruple confirms from this, this person I know, uh, you know, and I was sort of pressing them on it, that, that Lynch was spotted in the Twin Peaks area, as we might call it. Um, so that was last week or so. So I suppose that got me thinking, well, maybe if something is happening somewhere, then there are other people who know something, you know, and uh, maybe it is real. And so that may be prompted me to start um, thinking that something is definitely happening, uh, which I do, you know, now. So um, in terms of the what's that, what I'm actually referring to, in terms of uh, online today, Cameron just sent me the, um, the Twitter Uh, account of the well-known Fate Colossal. Oh, I'll just bring that up on the screen in a minute. Fate Colossal has uh, posted about Wisterius going back to the last year, I believe, at least, but mainly this year, and uh, obviously there were a variety of rumours and things like that. And there's been, as I'm sure many of you know, there is the uh, anniversary of Mulholland Drive this year, and it's been re-released. <clears throat> and i got to figure out what the hell... Okay, so we have only one small thing for uh, Peter... Okay, I'll better just play this on the screen. Just to give these some of these people their credit, there's a guy called Michel Inch Innocenti. Great name, Andrea Pararo. Another guy, I can't see here, he's gone off screen at the moment in this clip. 
and they were interviewing um, through a, a Zoom or similar to this, like I do with StreamYard. Uh, Peter Deming, uh, director of photography, been working with Lynch since uh, Lost Highway, at least. And I'm not sure if he did anything before that uh, with Lynch. Mary Sweeney. Lynch, who Lynch was married to and who edited uh, Mulholland Drive, right? I think I'd slightly forgotten that fact, but um, yeah. I know she definitely edited uh, Fire Walk with me, of course. So I think she was, you know, she's a, she's a really good editor. Uh, as Cameron has said, actually, I think, I mean, I wish she'd edited uh, The Return, actually, or at least in, you know, collaboration with Duane Dunham. Um, this is a recent interview um <coughs> this is an interview uh done by these people in it italy i believe they are fake colossal rights this is arguably the closest to an official confirmation we've got on that wisteria unrecorded night was ramping up until the pandemic halted things um Fake, fake Colossal continues, it's a source of optimism to hear him say, I'm assuming it'll, it'll come back to life at some point, though it's unclear if he's basing that at least in part on any specific inside knowledge or purely on his own assumptions. So I think based on specific inside knowledge, if you want to describe it as that. I can't really see how something could be in pre-production and then just... Uh, halt and then there's just no idea of anything that's happening you know but um, they can't confirm anything of course as is respond as uh, is said in uh, Andrew Lincoln in these responses to this post think about uh, DL projects they're not confirmed until they're done and scheduled for broadcast and Peter Deming at the end in this clip, he does basically say that kind of thing. He says, this is what I'm, um, I can't remember what his exact words are, but words to that effect of saying, uh, almost like what I'm allowed to say at this point, or yeah, I'll just uh, put the clip on anyway. Um, there we go. This is just a one minute clip. Um, I'll put a I'll put a link to the whole video or you go into the fake colossal account and I'm sure he'll have the link as well. But um, There you go. Anyway, this is just the clip. Okay, so we have only one small thing for uh, Peter. I have to ask this, uh, even though I know I don't know if you can answer. Uh, since you're credited online for it, I know you cannot tell us anything specific about it, but do we expect as David Lynch's fan to receive some news anytime soon about this? Project with Syria, we can hear on the internet. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I wish I had some news. I don't have any news. I think that it, because of the, uh, you know, the worldwide pandemic, uh, the project was, I think it was just starting pre-production. I had not 
started to work on it yet. And I'm assuming it will come back to life at some point. I don't know when that is. Uh, I have no insight I can share, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, so we have only one small thing for uh, Peter. I have to ask this, uh, even though I know, I don't know if you can answer. Uh, since you're credited online for it, I know mm. you cannot tell us anything specific about it, but we expect as David Lynch's fan to receive some news anytime soon about this project with Syria, we can hear on the internet. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I wish I had some news. I don't have any news. I think that it, because of, uh, Sorry, it was on a loop. So uh, <laughs> here's the actual um, the interview. I don't know if these guys are Italian. Probably, you can uh, maybe confirm that for me. I hope I've not got it wrong, and they're actually from um, somewhere else. So, uh, hello, Chris. How are you doing there? Good to see another person tuning in at this uh, unusual hour for coffee time. But um, I think, you know, having a bit of variety of what time we're on, etc., might attract a few new people. And as I've been saying lately, anyone watching like this and just springing up in the chat, I'd be forever grateful to you if you uh, liked the video primarily, uh, most importantly, though, subscribed, clicked on, you know, get all notifications when you subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the bell. Because <laughs> it would be good to get a few more people on board, especially uh, in contact uh, with me, so that we can potentially get more people on the show, whether they come on for half an hour or become regulars, you know. Because this is the way it's always been. Um, I know that obviously there's been it's been a quiet period, so people don't know, um, you know, what's happening with ter in terms of is there going to be a new project or, or anything like this. But I think that this is obviously as close as we're going to going to get to an official confirmation. I mean, I would go so far as to actually call it an official confirmation since. Mary Sweeney is sitting there, um, and obviously uh, Peter Deming is saying this, uh, and the way he ends as well does indicate like maybe he could say more, but that's this is all he uh, should be saying at the moment, perhaps. I'm not, I'm not being unrealistic. I don't think that obviously he has some kind of uh, massive secrets to tell or massive info that he wants to uh, start relaying to all of us. But um, obviously uh, there is that aspect of secrecy with all of this kind of a project. And uh, even from the title, just it being called Wisteria. Um <clears throat> Of course, there'll be always people who speculate and say, um, right, it's got nothing to do with Twin Peaks um, and it's going to be called Wisteria. So it could be uh, that maybe that's, you know, another location or a descriptive aspect of some aspect, some part of the show, sort of a Blue Rose type of thing, or um more the way i would see it is obviously the working title of twin peaks uh, the return was rancho rosa so referencing roses and wisteria is another flower so or flowering plant whatever yes i've got a good picture of uh Dean Stockwell, I think, here. There we go. So 
So I don't know, but that's um, Frank Sinatra, obviously, in a golden Hollywood picture, the age of uh, Hollywood at, at its most um, successful in some ways, you might describe, creatively, certainly. And uh, so Dean Stockwell was a child actor, of course, and uh, was in a lot of films back as, as a youngster. But um, we, of course, know him from Blue Velvet. Um, for some, is, does Benjamin in it have a second name? <laughs> Maybe he does, but somebody might be able to remind me in the chat. And, you know, I don't like to tell you this, but uh, he had a sort of career resurgence and was in uh, Paris, Texas, with um, which he was told about, uh, you know, this part is there for him or available by uh, Harry Dean Stanton. And then his, you know, career must have been given a lot of stability, obviously, by... Quantum Leap, of course. Um, I won't pretend to know a massive deal about Dean Stockwell by any means, but he is sort of part of that age of um, golden Hollywood, or I don't know, that's probably the wrong, the golden age of Hollywood, which Twin Peaks originally sort of um, celebrated in, in a way in some of its casting, for sure. But um, I think even in The Return, there was a little bit of that in uh, some part of it, but it uh, was certainly different, you know, like in the the man that... Uh, the English voice guy who was speaking to uh, Hastings' wife, Phyllis, her lawyer or whatever he was, she, she was supposed to be having an affair with, and then the appearance suddenly of uh, Richard Chamberlain, for instance, but... I mean, those things were just very brief. So it was like just brief glimpses of the old kind of Twin Peaks, if you know what I mean. Uh, that, that celebration of both Hollywood and old age Hollywood and uh, soap, soap operatics, but in a sort of, you know, glamorous way. And here is another photo of, uh, well... Agent Cooper, I think you can see very well there, but Gavin O'Hurley behind him. Son of Dan, Dan O'Hurley, I believe. Um, he recently uh, died age 70. So not very old, but, you know. Um, and, you know, he was uh, good in Twin Peaks in the small role he had as this Mountie, but um, like Cameron, I actually mistook him for the actor who then appeared in Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me playing uh, the, the sheriff's deputy, Deputy Cliff, Cliff Howard, who was played actually by the son of another famous actor, uh, more Italian American. Forgot the names now, but uh, you know who I mean. Sorry, let me just catch up with you, uh, chatters now. Everything uh, is all right. Says Lion Standing, thank you. This is actually Lion Standing 2. I didn't know you had more than one account. This is the sequel. Hello, none of the above as well, 33. Good name. Here's to Ben, yes. Hype. Well, I'm not hyping anything. I'm just telling you the facts. Pimpin' X, so... You know... 
Wisteria, a.k.a. Inland Empire 2. <laughs> I don't know if I've already answered what you were asking, uh, Phantom Cooper, with the. It's obviously this interview, which was uh, conducted. <laughs> if you go to the fake colossal account um, on Twitter, but we we would imagine that there would there will be. One would imagine there will be art, articles coming out about this, but. I've got to see to live and die in LA and would like to rewatch Married to the Mob properly, Sean. I've been rewatching some uh, classic films. Well, I watched uh, the one with uh, Ray Liotta, of course, Unlawful Entry. Not maybe, I don't know how many people might regard that as a classic film by any means, but. Uh, it was okay, quite uh, well done. But I mean, Ray Liotta really stood out in it. Uh, another child star, Kurt Russell, um, and his wife, played by um, oh my god. Last, uh, uh, last of the Mo Madeline Stowe, last of the Mohicans, I remember her from mostly. She was actually really good in it, so it's a good sort of like uh, one of those thrillers from that era. Thanks for the post, Sean. Anyway, uh, just coming in. Hello, James. Do you think that the giant could be Mike and the man from another place? be his left arm and other evil side. Reason being is that the giant says one and the same in the red room to Cooper when he is near the man from another place. Also, the man from another place is small and the giant is a giant. Hmm. Well, no, I mean, it's, it is genuinely a known and accepted fact that uh, the man from another place is, is Mike's arm because there's that scene at the end of uh, Fire Walk With Me where he you know, they sort of he puts their, they put their arm together as if, and uh, the giant is more related to the the waiter, obviously in the series because they both, uh, you know, dress the same, etc. In terms of the one and the same business, I'm not sure exactly who um, that's in the final episode of season two. I don't know exactly who the giant is referring to when he says that necessarily uh, I can't remember who else is in the scene in that part etc um,
yeah, really, Otter is part of the reason why I want to watch um, something wild. So. Apparently, Chris Isaac appears briefly in that film, but I don't know if he's dressed as a clown or something, whether you can tell it's him even. Of course, he, he appeared in Silence of the Lambs also by the same director. So, uh, Upstream colour. Um, isn't that a quite a sort of a um, more hallucinogenic type of film or something a bit um, related to one called The Black Rainbow or something like that. on the Black Rainbow. Well, I don't mean to get confused between Black Rainbow, which is a 1989 film with Rosanna Arquette, I believe, so which I remember quite, quite a bit. Yeah, well, Cameron, I mean, that Jonathan Demi is getting as... Or Isaac was getting as confused as me. Yeah, I couldn't even remember Jonathan Demi's name. It's probably the effect, to, a lot of it is to do with thinking about these uh, wisteria rumours and then having this kind of info out there. It's quite... Uh, Quite shocking, really, that it's, it's proven to be actually real. Uh, although, of course, there will be some people who come into our chat and then they say, no, it's not real. Um, just because the, you know, the cinematographer says that, that that's not proof, you know. So, um, and other such insights. So, um, I'm not really a big fan of the, the sort of more overground mainstream sites like Welcome to Twin Peaks, uh, m mainly because I just find it too, uh, it's like turning, you know, the whole Twin Peaks thing into some sort of department store or something. <clears throat> uh, not only in terms of the fact that obviously they're selling merchandise and all that, which is, of course is just a normal part of fandom, etc. But I mean, in terms of the way they present everything and, uh, and I don't know, it just, it just, I know that, you know, obviously they can't necessarily always run something consistently, but uh, when there's news like this about Wisteria today, it just seems, well, you know, why is the biggest page with what, the most followers and all of that and likes, you know, not actually putting something out there about it. Uh, so I imagine Lynchland probably will do or has done already. I've not checked, but um, this is one of the last things that uh, they posted on Welcome to Twin Peaks, which I didn't know about. Um, this is a um, video by uh, Donovan. 
and Lynch in terms of he helped him with the music and the idea. But the video is uh, just, um, well, you can see for yourself now. Yeah, you know I mean, if you want Inland Empire too, then then this is it, surely. But on the other hand, you know, the hair and the way Donovan is being uh, lit and uh, everything about it, the fact that he's also wearing blue, immediately brings to mind uh, Bob, you know, or Capitals, Killer Bob. So... If you're actually watching it with this with the music, it's not not the most pleasurable experience, I'll say. But anyway, I've turned off the the music now for um, copyright reasons. So yeah, you can see it, it's literally like that for nearly four minutes. So. It's a bit much. Um, that premiered a month ago now. It's got 9,000 views, so... Not really very many. <laughs> For uh, an artist who has nearly 44,000 subscribers. But, you know, it's... Some people might enjoy it, I don't know. <clears throat> right. Um... I still haven't seen Dune yet, but I keep putting it off, although I like Krull and Highlander 1 and 2. So I might like Dune. Um, well, I, I think that Highland, sorry, uh, Dune is much more slow-paced than any Highlander film. And definitely Krull as well, probably. Although I don't know Krull very well. I've probably seen it when I was quite young. But uh, it's... Some people really liked it, but it, feel, it felt a bit too, like, spaced out in, in a general sense for a first part for me. But it's really supposed to be just the introductory part. And it definitely feels like it. But it definitely... At the same time, I didn't feel really like I'd been in the cinema too long either. So, um, but it, it doesn't sort of jump out at you and start presenting you with kind of any really exciting scenes, like say if it was by Lynch or other directors, you know, who might be uh, inclined to make it more blatantly commercial or something. Uh, so it's and that is strange because I mean the moment there are moments when it is very prolonged and slow paced and then there are these other moments where you, the more weird characters or more uh, strange characters uh, are in it and then they're just only in it very briefly really the Harkonnen and the Phantom Cooper, it's not an unaccountable guy on Twitter if it's such an actual... Uh, no, I mean, it's an actual interview done done for, you know, on screen, a Zoom with, um, with Mary Sweeney and uh, 
Peter Deming, so obviously it's legitimate. And uh, it was an interview for the fact that uh, Mulholland Drive has been re-released, or you know, the 20th anniversary of it and stuff. So, so this this question about wisteria was sort of a you know an aside, but something which they put in there as just uh, curious fans, you know. And I don't know, you know, I mean, I, I think they did it well as well. They didn't start laughing or anything, you know. I would agree with you on that one, uh, Sean, about um, Inland Empire. I mean, I think, you know, being three hours has its merits compared especially to Twin Peaks to Return, which had 17 or so hours. So... Um, I don't really think, though, that Lynch is going to just start filming again on a, a low-scale type of camera or uh, be going off to, you know, somewhere in Europe to do it, like Poland or whatever again. But you never know. I think... I think there are... You know, you could definitely argue that... Uh, the return could have been better if it had been all filmed um, on more simple cameras, digital, but um, on a lower a lower budget, uh, more along the, the style of Inland Empire, but just a, um, a, a more. Um, appealing overall look than that, you know, but not obviously to the level of that the return looked. Um, sometimes the graininess and the sort of the uh, lower scale picture can actually work well. But um, I think it could have offered more of the freedom that Lynch might have wanted if he'd done that. And uh, we could have got more storylines that he almost just made up on the, on the spot in a way. Um, and even though I just see the return as being this whole kind of grand experiment or whatever, it's it's like um, if it was even more loosely scripted and Lynch was given even more freedom, I think it could have turned out uh, certainly different and, and arguably superior because of... Uh, I think, like, obviously you could tell that, that um, the return was scripted overall, but it was almost too... There was just almost too much script, you know, too much going on, in a way. And I'm not quite sure if there was a grand idea behind that or whether it's just a question of we've just got to make this long, you know. So Frost wrote up to a point and then Lynch took over and added so much, so... Um, I don't know about Caroline the Bar Ballerina, Brian. I don't know what you mean there, sorry. It's one of my choices in the... Um, oh, or do you mean that young girl who's... Uh, she says she's bipolar and she's a ballerina and a comedian. She's done some quite funny stuff, but... Uh, 
Bridget, this is not an actual uh, psychic reading channel. This is just me saying that I was having insights into uh, the possibility of new, new Twin Peaks, which... I think Wisteria must be, at least in part, so this new Lynch project. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, uh, give you the wrong impression on that or lead you down the garden path. So. Your internet is going in and out. Well, I hope it improves, obviously. Um, I sometimes wonder if these things can be related to the weather, actually. But um, it's can be down to many things, can, local connections, etc. So, hello there, Jem. How are you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Excalibur. Do you th do you see much of? Um, Exorcist 2, the heretic, as I called it. Um, maybe something, but maybe not. <laughs> um, Well, Brian, I think, you know, in terms of having a car, that is not a necessity for doing something that you want to do if it's, uh, it's, a, if it's a creative sort of thing. Uh, I mean, to me, a car is just like a nuisance in my opinion, but I'm sure many people don't view them as that. Uh, David Burrell, I'll give you a quick recap with absolute pleasure, and thank you for joining me here. Um, due to the 20th anniversary of Mulholland Drive, a Italian... Uh, organization of some sort which is uh, making videos that are on YouTube um, if you go to Fate Colossal Fate Colossal on Twitter he's posted a one minute clip and they just uh, turn the subject to can you tell us anything about Wisteria to Peter Deming the director of photography for Lynch since at least 1997 and Mary Sweeney's there as well who of course, was married to Lynch and his editor. Um, she smiles when this is asked, and Peter Deming says, yes, I mean, all I can say really is that it was in pre-production. Uh, I wasn't actually working on it, of course, uh, yet. Uh, well, clearly, he would. He, that's what was being planned, that he was going to be working on it. And then came the worldwide pandemic. But as far as he knows, then it will get back into gear and start happening. Um, and then he just says, that's pretty much all I can tell you, which obviously just sounds like, yeah, you know, just a common phrase, as in that's all the info I have. But you could read it as sort of uh, part of the whole like, let's keep things a bit secret at least. But it's surprising within that, if things are secretive, that he even said this. I don't know where Vin is at the very moment, Phantom Cooper, but I'll ask him tomorrow. Um... With, with in mind, uh, you know, can you come on, please, Vin? Because he's actually told us that he's going to Seattle at the start of December. So I want to um, inquire about that with him. It's 
at first I was thinking, you know, oh, okay, you know. I certainly don't think like that he would be making it up. I mean, he could make it, say it as a bit of a joke at some point, but pretty sure it's not. Pretty sure he's, he's being serious about this. But um, Phenomenal, spelt it wrong. Um, Phantom, Phantom Cooper... James, did you ever have a bi curious phase in your early days? Um, I can say that I didn't actually. No. I do remember being with my friend and. Uh, sort of someone who knew him was talking to us and uh, like, you know, he was jokingly saying to me, oh, are you, are you gay at all? Or, and I said, uh, like, you know, this is when I was quite about maybe 20 or something. And I said, uh, no, no, I'm not. And he said, uh, oh, I always, I always thought you were, you know, but I think that could have been, Maybe he was hoping I was gay or something. So, but yeah, I mean, you, I know you'll probably think that you're going to say the basis of your question, Phantom Cooper, is that I do do appear very bi curious to you. Maybe, like maybe I have a feminine way about me or something, and so sort, of, sort of lacking in a high T masculinity aspect. Which, you know, maybe maybe all those things wouldn't actually add up to being bi curious, though. So, to live and die in LA, though, it's uh, curiously unavailable on streaming here. You know, on sort of Amazon or wherever. So, you have to buy the Blu-ray if you want to see it. Yes, that he just he just confirmed it all at Ad, Adamo to the point of being official as such. I see it as because uh, we're not going to get anything more official than this at this point by any means. But we're not going to get a release from um, Twin Peaks Productions or whatever company is in control now. You know, saying this is happening, like you know, next week. So yeah, thank you for that comment, Adamo. Um, well, no, thank you, Sir David Burrell. I haven't no, I haven't noticed any real Mandela effects tonight, personally, Sean. But the thing is, I'm not really that aware of them always. But. Uh, I have noticed that I have a tendency to just have angry spells when Ben Mandela man, he sort of uh, becomes suddenly aware of or, or mentioning a new Mandela effect. And then I start uh, going into a sort of rage of some sort against it. Thinking he's talking, uh, saying, you know, he's talking complete bullshit. And I don't think that's a very good response from, on my part, and I feel bad about it, honestly. Um, so I need to try and uh, sort of find a way of dealing with that in a uh, healthy way that doesn't involve eating 12 Krispy Kreme donuts in one go or something like that. So, um, Romeo's bleeding. Gary Oldman is good from that era. Mm, I think, you know, the more time goes on, say in the next 10 years or whatever, that, uh, people all start, 
get even, getting even more, you know, amazing film from 1990 or whatever, raising things more. Uh, well, it happened with Fire Walk with me, for instance. And all of these films are very highly regarded anyway, aren't they, really? Romeo's Bleeding. But uh, I just mean in terms of them being reissued or reappraised by... Uh, and uh, Arrow re-releasing things and remastering. One issue is that some of these films now have become the the quality of the the film is not very good, or the quality of the print that you've got on uh, on streaming or something like that. So, if you're looking at a film from say, the early 90s or whatever. Sometimes they're sort of uh, degraded a bit. It's probably, obviously, it's because you're watching the, the mastering from from back then, maybe, or when it was first mastered to digi digital and stuff, or blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I noticed that on something I was watching, maybe it was that unlawful entry. Phantom Cooper says, I think you're very masculine, James. I think, like anyone, I've got a combination. I think inside, I actually can be quite... Uh, have some feminine traits, really. But not really in terms of... the way I... You know, some of the things to do with me are very... like the stereotypes of a, of a guy... You know, like not doing the washing up or... Uh, and then people will say, oh, you know, you, you can't cope. You need a... You need some female... Uh, help, you know. some Or female care, really. Domesticity and all that kind of thing. And then, you know, and, and then I eventually try and get, in, get into a situation like that. And then it just culminates in me just smashing lots of crockery and smashing massive quantities of china plates, etc. And then, yeah, and so it doesn't end well, really. And uh, no one wants that. Uh, <sighs> Maybe I'm. Better off for love. Uh. Yeah, I don't want to rage against the Mandela machine. I really, you know. Um, I need to learn how to uh, embrace the Mandela machine. None of the above 33. Sabrina's Instagram is a, such a tease at a glance, hoping it's new images. Hmm. Well, I've not noticed any of that kind of uh, content that you're suggesting. You mean like, you know, pictures of lingerie? Or... No, I don't. I do need to find the right woman, yes. And uh, I've looked at online dating, for instance, and uh, honestly, I I really don't like it. That's all I'll say. Uh, actually, you know, somebody close to me in the family, like, said, uh, you know, I was like, oh, it's bad online, like, in terms of uh, online dating. And... and he said to me, yeah, I mean, basically it must be like lots of like uh, unattractive women, right? And I was like, I, was, I responded like, what? How could you say that? You know, I mean, you can't say that. Like, you go on these pages and uh, you can't judge, judge it like that. Go, go through, you know, different age ranges of females, etc., and say... All of these are unattractive women who've ended up uh, without, you know, a current 
partner, as we say now, or whatever, or a new squeeze, because um, because of their appearance, primarily, coupled with you know a lack of personality or something. I mean, that is, I think that would be a the very uh, not not a good thing to say, but also it's no doubt untrue. Sure, everyone says, go to church. It will help you, I promise. Thank you. That's... Yeah, I think that going to a... Um, Alpha Christian group locally to me to introduce me to Christianity would be highly beneficial to me. Sure. Um it is something I intend to do when I've had uh, another booster jab, so that I can be in a in a large, you know, room with a lot of uh, people uh, talking about Christianity. So, and then you know, at just some point in the middle of the discussion, I can say, "Anybody here like hot ass?" Or something like that, you know. And, just see how it goes down. Because, I mean, you know, they're quite open-minded usually. Um, no, I'm not into BDSM, uh, Phantom Cooper. That's just, that's a disgrace. Um, I don't know even what that does. What does that um, stand for? BDSM, bondage, dominance, S&M, is it? Or... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not explicitly talking about Tinder. I'm talking about um, pages I've been on. If you want to look for me on there, are OK Cupid and Plenty of Fish, and really they're just. Uh, I don't know what to say about them. Really, that anyway, they're all desperate for your cash these days and set whatever protocols or kind of uh, restrictions on your account. So it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's basically like prostitution, getting people to pay to meet people, you know. I find it interesting how uh, Lynch is so restrained and in his, like, this is the weather today. Or, you know, picking the balls, basically. Uh, from, well, he get what does he get the balls out of? Like a bag or something, or... No, like it's out of a plastic, sort of like a sweet container or something. But um, then he'll do on the Friday, he'll go, And if you can believe... Like that, you know, and take... But going on even longer, you know. So... I don't really understand at this point. I mean, I suppose it, it gives him a kind of a community in some weird, weird way, but I just feel like he could expand the operation uh, uh, a smidgen, you know, into, say, having occasional videos once a week, perhaps, where Lynch does a Zoom with some person. You know, even talking to Donovan, for instance, I mean, that'd get that video some more views. But, like, also, who else? You know, talking to people, obviously, from TM, talking to uh, people who worked on Twin Peaks, 
I know he doesn't want to just be having videos where he'll say, oh, I can't talk about that. Uh, but, you know, obviously you don't, you can talk about whatever you want. So, and he'd be, he'd be in complete control. So, yeah, Chris, I mean, I think you're right. It is probably a form of OCD to some degree for, for someone like Lynch to keep doing it, you know, on a daily basis throughout the whole time we've been in. It's just the sort of the, the way it has become, it's a sort of a performance on some level, obviously. Uh, so would Lynch have grown the beard and let his hair get longer if he'd not been on camera every day? So he could see it gradually growing all throughout last year or this year, etc. And then lending itself to this this theory that we had on reddit where he was just suddenly doing something in august or where, wherever it was when he got his hair cut might have been before that it's just interesting at least i do actually have some exciting news for you Coming up in one moment. So, yeah, um, basically, whoa, yeah, uh, yeah basically. I have some very good news for you about Queen of Hearts. Not necessarily for everyone here. You know, I'm not going to be forwarding a Blu-ray of Queen of Hearts, the finished film by Cameron Cloutier, onto you uh, through your post box tomorrow. But um, I am very pleased to be able to tell you that I will be all going well, seeing about the first 25 minutes of the film in an exclusive presentation. And uh, then I will be able to give a rundown of what I've seen in terms of, of what I've seen in terms of, uh, you know, the look, mood, sound, performance, um, so on uh, what weather was occurring in different shots but not obviously describing uh, the actual plot or story down into any uh, detail on giving spoilers because uh, you know I want other people to be able to see the film without having it um, all you know uh laid out for them before they even see it but um and you know i'm i am kind of uh, in a exclusive kind of vip club being able to see this i mean bearing in mind especially the antagonism in, uh, that arose nothing to do with <laughs> Queen of Hearts, but due, due to me and uh, Cameron and me getting very uh, testy over the uh, the running of Twin Peaks Worldwide, a Facebook page, which is was a very very important matter, of course. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so you know now that is a long long time ago, but at the same time. Uh, it's good to sort of remember the situation as it's been and everything. And, uh, and hopefully we can all move on and look at this 
uh, project from Cameron with open eyes. So I'm I'm really glad that I'll be able to uh, give you a first scene reaction, you know, first see reaction or preview reaction. It's exciting, definitely. So, um, I mean, I have already actually seen a, a, a small amount of Queen of Hearts clips, and it actually, um, it surprised me in terms of the quality. You know, I was excited by it, so... I think you will be too. So yeah, I was um No, oh, I mean, you know, last week I did think something was coming and now this has come upon us really. And so it's interesting, you know. Whether that's me being psychic or it's a coincidence, you can, you know, I don't know, you can tell me, maybe. It's really interesting how things come together sometimes, but it could be just that we all have common interests. So, you know, but even so, it's, it's coincidental, a lot of these things. Like last week, I watched uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind again, the original cut anyway, and that original one is is, has, is slightly different to the uh, special edition, and so it was a bit of a new experience for me. But then, you know, I just get sent this American Chronicles episode, the Lynch Frost production, and that's got Richard Dreyfus narrating and also shots of Devil's Tower in it, this Bicanation one introduced by Michael Horse as well. So anyway, this is what I was seeing earlier out of my window just before I started this video. So, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, fill you in on that one. It's a lot of people, I mean, in horror films, etc., or probably going back into literature or uh, myth, etc., you know, people are scared of the dark, aren't they? Which is an interesting thing. And there's been some kind of, uh, must be some just uh, part of the connections and things downstairs with the lights, the lights not turning on and the uh, security system not working or something downstairs. But um, I mean, I don't, I don't personally find the dark very scary, really. Um, I'm more scared of the day, to be honest. So, Well, that's a bit of a cynical idea, Phantom Cooper. He's not trying to do that. That's been done by... Uh, well, it's not... I don't know if it's been the uh, aim, but certainly 
it has happened with that project that was Northwest Passage, uh, which raised considerably more money than Cameron. I think up to $75,000. Not sure. Might be. That's a lot. You know, I don't know if it's as much as that. But it was supposed to be about a gay gay young, young lad growing up in the Twin Peaks area and identifying with Laura Palmer. So, uh, If suddenly uh, tomorrow we had an official announcement that uh, Twin Peaks The Return Part 2 was... Um, was going ahead, you know, you'd have a lot more of this kind of interest on the social media pages, etc. And it would really help Cameron's film, for instance, to sort of get word of it out there just by the fact that there'd be more activity. It's like footfall or whatever with a shop, you know. Uh, if something is in fashion, basically, then it can only be positive. No, I mean, Cameron really wanted to make it. it it's a question of the actual difficulties presented in doing that, you know, especially if you're not uh, trying to make Inland Empire Part 2, basically, which... At this point, I am fairly sure that Cameron has not done. I.e., I mean, sitting around smoking, living the art life, and then just suddenly filming something just on, you know, a hunch like that, and uh, having the camera flying all over the place. Just the kind, the, you know. Uh, it's a kind of a way of filming things the same as if you were maybe 18 or something that Lynch did a bit. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not actually saying that's bad, but I don't think that Cameron's whole approach was like that. Uh, obviously some of Inland Empire was filmed more conventionally with cranes and things like that, but yeah. Hello there, Jamie. Good to see you. I'm just glad everyone's on good terms. I wasn't sure about any potential grievances and things, but um, hello there also to uh, Gary. Hope you're okay. Um, someone actually came into the video earlier from Facebook groups or whatever, and they thought that this was a genuine uh, psychic reading group. <laughs> so I think I might have to rename the video. To something more sensible. This is a problem with it if you're trying to be humorous about things. Uh, there's always going to be somebody who uh, thinks that you're either taking the piss or they take it seriously. So, and so you uh, know, I don't actually think I'm psychic. Uh, I just think it was a question of coincidences and things. Maybe it was just something in the air, you know, in uh, the zeitgeist or... Uh, who knows? Maybe it's Mandela Man's effect on me or something. And it's coming to the end of the year. You know, these interviews are going on now, obviously, for uh, Mulholland Drive, 20th anniversary, so... At some point, someone's got to say something, right? And they did. So uh, it's just good that there's been this kind of openness. And we can say, I mean, I count it as official as such. Uh, but the fact that it's someone as close to Lynch as his director of photography saying, you know, that Wisteria was in pre-production that uh, obviously Lynch hasn't said to him, you know, don't ever speak of this at all, you know. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I know so, but uh... Kitty Horse, poor Audrey. Hello, poor Audrey, by the way. Sorry, uh, Gitty Horse. And uh, that's an interesting comment in terms of um, one aspect of the return, you know, and Audrey's scenes in it, um, culminating in her actually dancing to what is announced as Audrey's dance or... Yeah, Audrey's dance. It's not Audrey's theme, is it? It's so that means obviously that the Twin Peaks we're watching somehow has a uh, possession of the CD soundtrack of uh, Twin Peaks from nineteen ninety, just as um, the room fob, the key fob for. Cooper's room says, uh, you know, clean room, reasonably priced or whatever, um, which is actually the quote from Cooper. So the, you know, the self-referentiality or the, the fact that it's kind of referring to itself like that makes me think that um, part of what we're actually seeing there, you know, at the end with... Audrey looking into the mirror is it's you know Cheryl and Fan looking into the mirror you know seeing Audrey shocked at the kind of what has become of her uh, and that's and that's pretty much the same kind of thing that's happening at the end of with uh, Carrie Page you know In that, you know, you've actually got the person who actually who lives in that actual house. And if you look at the way that um, she looks at Cheryl Lee in that scene, or Carrie Page, it's sort of like with that look of recognition of, oh my God, this is Laura Palmer actually outside my door, in a way. And instead of, and instead of what we hoped for, of course, I mean, obviously, many people hoped for... I know that there are Audrey fans out there who really wanted her to be running the hotel, Great Northern, or running... I mean, or in the FBI, this kind of thing. Um, but I don't know about that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, OK. Wish fulfilment ideas, maybe they're good. But on the other hand, you know, if she'd just been working in the salon and been reasonably doing okay, it would have been preferable to seeing uh, how it did end, you know, for Audrey. Or it's not the ending, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Where it uh, pauses, perhaps, is the word. Well, I hope you enjoy Ghostbusters After Life, Sean. I really want to see it as well, actually. I don't really have much of a I don't have some sort of major expectation with it um, but at the same time I generally expect I will enjoy it because I don't really think that my expectations or um, approach to the film is is like the kind of people who really, the critics who tend to uh, come down on it, you know. Yeah, I think part of the thing of season three almost is you could apply or the return you could apply to it certain things you would get in a normal or a more conventional show even something like say dark you know you'd have a character kind of explaining 
possibly Cooper or somebody saying, well, in the Black Lodge, there is no time. Past and future are the same, as in uh, it's all one. Or it's all happening at the same time. Or you could just step one way or another and uh, go backwards and forwards in time, etc. Um, but something's happened, something's wrong, as Mike, the one our man says in The Return, something's wrong here or... So the Black Lodge is kind of not confined just to its own space in uh, existence. It's sort of filtered through into reality as such. Um, as is indicated somewhat in certain scenes, like, for instance, in the, uh, the pie shop where we see Mike, you know, and he's there in it, in the lodge, but it's inside the pie shop. Um, and I think I think throughout the entirety of the return, that's pretty much goes for everything. Everything has become the Black Lodge has sort of um, taken a hold somehow, and uh, you only have to look at, for instance, the scene where there's Stephen and Becky in the car, and there's the their first one, basically their first scene, I think. And uh, you can see someone in the background walking backwards far across the street, you know. And I don't mean like some kind of, um, like uh, an extra or whatever who was told, you know, you walk backwards down the, um, the sidewalk there. It's like actually been manipulated somehow, like a part of the frame. I know that this kind of thing can be done quite easily. And it's the same as in the scene with Big Ed, you know, where his reflection differs uh, from the uh, what we actually see him doing, you know, drinking the soup or whatever. There's other instances of that as well. In the an end scene, you know, where they're in the diner and the people are swapping around. There's also like a um, car that just goes past three times, the same car that looks like it's got some kind of roof roof rack on it. And There are cars, of course, going past Big Ed when he's in the night and... Uh, that seems to the same kind of thing seems to be happening, just a repetition of the same car going past. No, I don't have any uh, official Queen of Heart release date because of the uh, effects work that's being done on this at the moment, and he doesn't know when it's exactly going to be finished because it's not all being done in house, as it were. So. Um, but yeah, at least I'll have something to report on, uh, hopefully very soon, about it. And give you a, a bit of a heads up on to what it's all like. The single life. Hmm. Well, I just want to ask people here if you've heard of a band called Stacker Bow, is it? Stacker Bow. Just really like that one song they did called Here We Go. Oh, here we go. I think it's actually, yeah. Just put it on for you anyway, it's really good. 
I don't know the exact lyrics for it, but um, it's really a nice song, to be honest. <laughs> Stacker Bow Classic of the above says my mother lives in Tennessee the dark on our farm is terrifying and the cacophony of sound that surrounds is very unnerving hmm. what kind of cacophony of sound it's early 90s Gary I think um, if you have any other song requests though please uh, just I'm looking for one to just uh, see out the show with Um, interesting comment. Anyway, uh, none of the above. 33, thank you. Um, I don't think I could do justice to uh, in dreams though, sorry. Hopefully this will suffice for the time being really. Mills to be in this top 100, but it seems one particular memory from the show has haunted viewers down the years. Former Heidi High star Paul Shane launching an unprovoked assault on the Righteous Brothers. You never close your eyes anymore. No, 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 no. Your lips. lips. Yeah, yeah. Never no like people in your fingertips. You're trying hard, hard not, not to show, show it, baby. Baby, baby, I know you've lost that love and feeling. Oh, oh, that love 
good feeling. You've lost that loving feeling. Now it's gone. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, tuning in today. Us. Um, you and me, me and you. Lots and lots of you to do. Lots and lots of you to see. Me and you, you and me and me. I've not had one of these for a long time, but I just thought I'd play out with this one, actually, if I can find it. This is good. People have done this. You can watch a video of him making this, or this is a good version anyway. It goes on for six minutes, so I don't think I'll play the whole of this, but um, it's good.
I like Turkish Delight. Yeah. I do. A lot of people don't like Turkish Delight. I mean, fries Turkish Delight, the type of the chocolate on it, or poor apple. But I like it. A lot of people say, oh, Turkish Delight, that's disgusting. How can you, how can you eat that? It's like eating perfume. It's like eating old woman's perfume. What's wrong with eating perfume, Lavender anyway? Water, or rose water, or whatever it is. How can you like that? That's a quality product. I like it. I like Turkish Delight. I don't like it enough to get it every day. Or every week. In fact, I can't remember the last time I got a Turkish Delight. All the glitters is not gold. But every this, now and then. This is not gold, but this is shop, mandate. And I walk past the shelves or the chocolate. And I'll see a Turkish Delight and I'll get it. It's nice. I like it. I like Turkish delight. Da 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 Right, pretty, pretty tell me a song, well. please. Any song. EastEnders. Da, 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 da. I'm going to do EastEnders, right? Let's just get in. Let's just get on with it. Da, 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 da. There you go. Remove drums. Uh, remove the drums for the, the, the intro snare bit, I. Of course I'm fucking being sarcastic. I'm doing the in, the, the famous intro to EastEnders, which is dum 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 dum. 
Oh, it's so beautiful. Make, where says, make the bass fatter. Rare, Rare comes in and says, make the bass fatter. <laughs> I've not even fucking recorded a single note yet. Not even recorded a single note yet. <laughs> that is nice and fucking shy. To everybody saying double it up, triple it up, add a limit, etc, etc, reverb, I fucking know. I know everything that you know, and then everything that I know. I can't do it right now, because unfortunately fucking time goes for here to there. It doesn't all happen there. No. Uh, We're going get, to record get it. the vocals. Anyone can fall in love. That's the easy part. You must keep it going. <laughs> this is it, everybody. The world beautiful. premiere. That's beautiful. Anyone can fall in love. That's the easy part. You must keep it going. Anyone can fall in love. That's the easy part. You must keep it going. Anyone can fall. That's the one that gets you. That's the one that gets you. Sorry. That was good. Uh. I think this is the best one to end on. Mr. Chanfo thinks the 201 bits. Can we see B? Christ, you must. We didn't like the film. No. That was actually our new album. We didn't raise it for the film. I, I don't know if he's joking, but I don't. I, that's not true. No, they just no. used our music in the film. So, but I found that difficult to follow. He's just having a joke. Well, the hype. My dog loves yeah. it. But uh, I was just. That was it. That was it. That was the one. I think that was the one. They said his dog loved it. <laughs> in the film. So, but I found that difficult to follow the hype. My, my dog loves yeah. it. But uh, I was. I found that difficult to follow. I mean, my dog loved it. His dog loved Saturday Night Fever. That's a very good album, by the way. It's because, I think he's saying his dog loved it because, you know, they're kind of singing high. Um, yeah. Is it a Saturday Night Fever soundtrack? Uh, reception. It's the second best sell, uh, best selling soundtrack album of all time. It includes Staying Alive, Night Fever, How Deep Is Your Love, More Than A Woman, and If I Can't Have You. Two previously released BG songs, Jive Talking and the whole spectrum yeah. one was when we do a show, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, they're clearly they're pop standards, aren't they? Sort of press. Well, thank you, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very nice. yeah. we don't, we you know, we don't, yeah. they're our babies yeah. as far as we're concerned, yeah. yeah. And then you had a what turns out to be quite a short period when you sp you split up, uh, yeah. was that a particularly fraught time? Do you think, well, that was well, that was your career finished, you'd had a few years, and that was going to be it because some groups do that and they, yeah. they're never heard of again. Did you yeah. think that might be happening to you? No. Not really. No, we still. Well, when we split up, yes. 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 For, for 15 months, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. But we realized we, we didn't enjoy it being by ourselves. No. You know? So it was a lot of things going on, egos and things. When you're, I mean, Robin and I were about 19. Yeah. So we were like all young and getting all these things. People. Fucking 19. <laughs> 19 when they started, it means. You. I. When. When. When were you 19? When were you fucking 19? I 
No, that that was before, surely. 1977, you were only fucking 19 then. I, I think it was after the... Like, when they split up. That... They were 19. 1977. <laughs> 1977. Um, how deep is your love, BGs? 1977. Very important information. Uh, Morris Gibb. 1977. 40. 40 50. You're getting 60. a bit sidetracked now, Lemmy. Come on. I thought that would have been it. I thought that that's when you would have had enough. Got to get a message to you and all these sort of, you know. The- uh, 40, 40, 50. Right, I, it must have been, uh, you know, when I had got to get a message to you and all these sort of, you know, the old fucking, have you ever seen them on YouTube? It's all black and white. Right, anyway, here we go. Malmo thinks it's up. Cheers, buddy. Thinks it's up. See that thing about my dog loved the album? I thought that would have been it. I thought that that's when you would have had enough. Here we go. Think that one brother's better than the other and you don't need them no, you don't need him sure. so we believed all that yeah. crap you know yeah <laughs> but it didn't last that long I mean, no. it probably no. felt a long time but you had one very very good uh single on your own that saved by the bell that was that's that right. was a good yeah, one do you feel oh i don't need those other two i can knock out something like <laughs> so there's that. a lot of ego problems at the time yeah. and um i don't i can't even remember why at the same time called don't forget to remember which was yeah. I, I forgot that one but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah i'm called don't forget to remember <laughs> barry gibbs we had one called to uh, say, but I've forgotten that one. Barry Gibb, his heart must be going, his heart must be thumping right now, like, I'm fucking, my adrenaline's gone, man, I can't take any more of this cunt. Which was yeah. I've, I've forgotten that one. But, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah no, of course. We're getting yeah. on like a storm, aren't we, Tom? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but... Uh, well, uh, yeah, we yeah. are. Pass it, pal. <laughs> so, anyway. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, well, I guess I'd better join. Oh. <laughs> yes, just man. In, uh, just well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, man. I can't do this off. Oh, I'll get it off next door. I'll see you later, guys. Okay. Well, there you go. Let's drive the Bee Gees. <laughs> okay. Fucking yes, man. <laughs> in fact, I might just leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but uh, well, uh, yeah, we yeah. are. Pass it, pal. There's, there's Robin. Robin's like, yep, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, aye. Oh yeah, let's go then. Fuck it. Robin's like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, anyway buddy. <laughs> yeah. Right, he's waiting for me to come back, like. Right. You're coming back, aren't you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'd better join. Oh. <laughs> well, well, you can stay in uh, just Well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. <laughs> Oh, I'll get it off next door. I'll see you later, bye. Okay. Well, there you go. Let's drive the Bee Gees. Hey, guys. I'll see you later. See you later. Okay. Um, well, um... Uh, that uh, looks about all uh, it for tonight. I hope they've got the potter's wheel uh, ready. But uh, thank you to all my guests, those who stayed and those who have gone. This is me, Clive Anderson, saying good night. Good night. <laughs> He actually looks fucking gutted, by the way. He actually looks gutted. Well, he should have been gutted. I mean, these days, you'd be like, yes, I'm going to, this is going to be all over the place, man. Everybody's going to be watching this. That was pre planned. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Same hairline as you. No, no, quite. No. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, cup, uh, thanks for sub. No, it really was shattering, and I think it's a good moment to end there on there. Uh, it's... Yeah, I think we can watch uh, Lee, Leo Sayer on uh, Celebrity Big Brother some other time when he storms out. That's pretty, also pretty dramatic. So, hope everybody remembers that the BGs are actually a fantastic band. <laughs> and deserved 
much better. Much, much better from uh, whoever the heck was interviewing them. Went too far with his shtick there. I uh, hope people remember that and learn from it. Anyway, thank you everyone for sticking for sticking with me now for nearly two hours. Uh, it's been an uh, enjoyable broadcast. And uh, yeah, I would just like to confirm this is not actually a psychic hotline for anybody who uh, leaves messages, etc. I apologize if I let uh, people down the uh, garden path or up it, whatever, you know. And they think that could be possible. It's not. This is not a psychic hotline. So I'll see you in the bushes and uh, all the best for now. Lots of love from me. Cheerio.